let's move on to main topic number two. And our second main topic involve we're going to follow up on the Universal deal with AMC Theaters. Now, for those of you who did not catch a couple days ago on my failed journalist channel, although I talked about it on the Entrepreneur Show as well, it was actually a v- surprise eighth topic a few days ago. AMC struck a historic deal with Universal Pictures, whereas they would shorten the window of the movie from having to be in theaters for 90 days to just 17 days before it could start going to premium video on demand, which I suspect, it's not confirmed, but I suspect a certain time of that window will be exclusive to AMC on demand. Now, I've done like its own live stream where this is just such a bad idea on so many levels. Um, It's not only bad for AMC, it's bad for Universal. We know what Universal wants to do. They basically want to reshape the movie distribution model to benefit them. And there have been a lot of reactions. But interestingly, no one's really on their side. Although NATO, the National Association Theater Organization, has not actually made a claim, uh, we know that Regal and Cinemark are not for this. We know that Disney and Warner Brothers will not be making a deal like this. But the funniest thing is now Universal has to actually explain what they're thinking behind this is. Because as I explained in one of the live streams, like shortening the window is detrimental to everyone. Most of a movie's money is still made in the theaters. It's not made on Netflix. I know you want to believe that paying Netflix $15 a month is enough to justify them making a $200 million movie like The Irishman. It's not. And a $200 million movie, dollar movie with Ryan Reynolds, it's also not going to cover that. But Universal crazily says that the deal will get movies back in theaters faster. <laughs> really? All right, let's look at this. This was almost funny. Okay, so Universal recently struck the uh, landmark deal uh, that will make it possible for newly released movies to arrive on premium VOD as soon as 17 days after their initial release. This has proved to be a controversial move within the industry, but it is one that NBC Universal CEO Jeff Shell thinks will ultimately help get movies back to theaters faster. Movie theaters has been closed in the U.S. since mid-March, with the hope being that they can open by mid to late August in time for Tenet and other movies coming down the pipeline. During a recent quarterly earnings call, Jeff Shell addressed the AMC deal, explaining that the ability to release movies on premium VOD as well as in theaters may create enough financial incentive to keep to get them in theaters. Here's what we had to say about this. We currently are stuck in a kind of chicken and the egg situation in the theatrical business. Movie studios like ours don't want to release movies into theaters when there are only a smattering of theaters open. We need a pretty robust amount of theaters open to justify our spend. But the flip side is exhibitors can't open a bunch of theaters if they don't have any new movies to put in them. Old library movies are not going to drive people to movie theaters. Well, that's not true, but we'll get to that in a minute. So we think this model will actually allow movies to come back to theaters when it's safe a lot more quickly than they would have in the current environment. Yeah, so this is Universal's response to what to kind of make it seem like they're still the good guys, but no, they're not. First of all, let's just comment this thing. Old library movies are not going to drive people back to the theaters. Oh no, they will, especially when the theaters have been shuttered for eight months and people have been stuck indoors. Here's the thing, I have gone to some classic movies at drive-in theaters. We're talking Jaws, Indiana Jones, E.T. Um, we, you know, we saw My Spy, which was an Amazon movie. We could have easily streamed it for free on Amazon Prime. We decided to go to the drive-in theaters and pay for it. Every single time I've gone to the drive-in theater, it's been sold out. Now, on a 3,000 plus screen Scale, maybe that wouldn't be a sustainable business model, but here's the thing. Right now, people do want to go back to the theater. So old movies will drive people to the theaters, at least for the time being. Now, here's let's address this other thing. Let's see here. We need a pretty robust amount of theaters to justify our spend. I kind of agree on that. But here's the thing. But the flip side is exhibitors can't open a bunch of theaters if they don't have any movies to put out them. So we think this model will actually allow movies to come back to theaters when it's safe a lot more quickly than they would have in the current environment. No, 
That's not how this works. Because if people can stream the movie at home, they will. So this does not do anything good for the movie theaters. In fact, if you want to know what will bring people back to the theaters faster, you keep movies in theaters longer. For a time being, because here's the thing, the movie theater attendance is capped. They can only have so many movies out there right now. You keep the movies in theaters a little longer. And eventually someone will probably want to see Tenet in theaters. Hey, it opens up in September, but they're not sure if it's safe. Well, September comes. And then October comes. You know, maybe November comes. They're like, you know what? We know people who are going to the movie theaters, and they're not getting sick. So we really want to see Tenet, and it's still there. So let's go see Tenet. But the fact that the that Jeff Shell is saying that this model will bring people back to theaters... This is a guy who has not been in the industry long enough to know how this works. Now, I already shared this story on one of my other live streams, but I'm going to share it again. People are cheap, and they love their convenience. This is human nature. I'm old enough to remember when it was like a ye- almost a year between The Lion King, the 1994 animated movie, went to theaters to, to VHS. I believe it opened in July of 1994. Huge hit. It was like in the top five for several months. And we, and then Christmas comes around. Now, if this was in the mid-2000s, it would have been on VHS. Instead, Disney decided, you know what? We're going to re-release The Lion King for two weeks during Christmas. And then the VHS came out in April to record-breaking sales for VHS tapes because you had deprived people of it so long it kept the movie valuable. Now, come the mid-2000s, you start seeing movies like Finding Nemo and The Lord of the Rings and The Matrix actually making a little bit more money on DVD than it did in theaters. And those movies made a ton of money in theaters. So... Movie studios start thinking, like, maybe we should start bringing the DVDs sooner so that we can collect in more of that money early on. And it works for a while, but here's the problem. People start to catch on about this. They start to realize, like, hey, if we've missed the movie in the first three weeks, maybe four If we wait just a little bit longer, we can just buy the DVD, and we can own it, and we can watch it as many times as we want. That's what they're going to do. And that became the normal. In fact, that became so much the normal that the opening day weekend box office became more important than ever. Because there's very little time for something to become a word-of-mouth hit. And, And even if it becomes a word of mouth hit, by the time the word gets out that this is worth seeing, you might already be halfway towards the DVD coming out. You might as well wait. If Universal is thinking, well, most movies make the majority of their money in the first three weekends, so after that we might as well put it on digital for the people who hung out. That's not how this is going to work. Like, yeah, that's how it's going to work at first. But then think about like a family movie. Like, let's take the next Minions movie. If the family doesn't see it in the first two weeks, okay, it's still in theaters that next weekend, but then the family is thinking, hey, you know what? Let's wait one more week. If we wait one more week, we can buy it at home, we can invite the, the neighbors over, and we'll all watch it. Basically, you're looking at a movie at $2 a head. You are undercutting your own business model when you do this. You devalue it. And then... There is the next logical step. What if this stuff goes directly to streaming anyway? I've already talked about this on the show. Scoob was one of the very, very few things that I bought digitally during this pandemic because it wasn't in theaters at all. $20. But a month later, it was on HBO Max for free. And had I known that, I would not have spent $20 on it. But then what's the next step? Okay, it goes straight to streaming. 
But then, human nature, we want things cheap, we want it convenient. Well, you know, I'm already paying for a subscription to HBO Max. If I stop buying these premium on-demand movies, I will just see them a month later for, for free. I'll just see them a month later for free. This is bad all around. In fact, Cineworld, the owners of um, Regal, they had some very strong words. They said, we do not see any business sense in this model. And they have also said, by the way, that they will not partake, which, you know, I was getting a little depressed thinking about this situation yesterday because I know some of you don't care, but I love going to the movies. Movies movies is where my real passion is. I've got so many movies. We're watching a movie pretty much every day. This week, my wife and I have been doing like a foreign language film marathon. We've just been watching foreign language films. And if you go to my Entrepreneur Media um, page, you can see the uh, the shopping spree that I did at Barnes & Noble with the Criterion sale. And the idea of not going back to theaters just kind of breaks my heart. But here's the other thing. AMC may be the largest distributor in the world, but the other theaters have clout too. If Regal, and Regal said that they will not show Universal movies if they do not, you know, honor the 90-day window. So if they refuse to do that, then Universal has two choices at this point. They either forget this 17-day nonsense and keep the 90-day window, or they push ahead anyway, and they just don't show their movies on Regal or Cinemark. And by that extension, they are not on half of the screens in America. In America, there might even be some markets that are not able to show in theaters at all. And in fact, in, there are some countries where Regal is there, but not AMC, and they will not go to those countries. How is that going to work out for them? So this is a bad deal all around. However, I would like to know, what do you all of you think about this? Do you agree this is a bad deal, or do you like this deal? And what about this deal do you like, and what about this deal do you not like? I'd love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly.